Okay, start with this prayer. Lord, I ask you to help us overcome those fleshly moments when we are tempted to rejoice at someone else's hardships. I must admit that when I hear something has happened to a person who has wronged me, something inside of me secretly rejoices. I know that this is wrong and that this is not the way you behave. Please forgive me for responding in a way that is contrary to love. Help me be concerned and prayful for every person who is undergoing any kind of hardship in life, even those who, who have acted like they are my enemy. Mm -hmm. I pray this in Jesus' name. I think that's so true, don't you? Especially in today's world. Yes. <clears throat> um, I got a text last night from someone and I won't say who it is because y'all, some of you know who it is. I'll quit it. Um, and I'd like to hear your responses about it. Denise, <laughs> it's like, okay, here it comes. <laughs> right. Um, do you have thoughts on scriptures on God's purpose to have nations? There are some of the persuasion, a couple I know at All Saints, so she's already putting down my church or, you know, part of my church, that we shall allow illegals to enter the country and that we should, as Christians, should just accept it. What do you think of that? Help me because I'm supposed to respond to that. <laughs> Gosh. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. it's a tough question and that's what we're going through isn't it yeah yeah it's no, no. easy answer no because really you're not you probably get judged or condemned either way either way you answer because i don't think it, aliens, illegal, anyone should be able to come in any country, not just the United States, illegally and stay there and live off of other that people's country. hard work. That's horrible. That's just laziness it, to me. And the Bible does speak to that, does it not? Yes. You know, if you're able to work, I, I think it's in Corinthians, so we'll hit it in Corinthians. If you're able to work and you're not, don't do anything for them. You know, that sounds harsh. But that's because of laziness. Right. That's what I was saying. It sounds harsh, but it's in scripture. You, but even if you quote scripture, scripture to some Christians, it's still, I don't know, some people just can't accept. Well, mm -hmm. along with that, if you think about it, if people look for direct scriptures that sometimes aren't there. Uh -uh. But yeah. when you look at the personality of God or when you look at Scripture, Scripture is a God of order. He right. is not a God of chaos. Right. Um, he is a he has got a boundaries. He has always set boundaries on his people. Um, right. And so when we try to take something that may be uh either politically correct or maybe because we have um heartfelt emotions about people that are living in countries so far worse than ours to allow immigrations or immigrants in i don't think we have any um leg to stand on as long as we have a process for doing that our problem is this uh flagrant disregard for coming in the front door Mm -hmm. And um, again, you know, as I've thought about some of these horrible immigrants that are just suffering, God is a God of order and there is a way to do it. So when somebody wants to look for one scripture that allows it or I, I don't think we find it. But when you look at the personality of God and how he has ordered everything from creation on down, I don't think our I don't think our policies that create chaos have anything to do with it. Well, and I so, think also the go ahead, Ray. 
So I think one of the key things that you said and when you quoted was illegal immigrants. Exactly. Our nation, like every nation, has legal ways to immigrate into a country. Absolutely. We are one of the few countries that allow illegal immigrants at all. So the question is kind of a misnomer. A, that's, that's just been a recent thing, too. Right. Yes. So it's kind of a misnomer. Should we allow illegal immigrants? There, there's really no such thing as allowing illegal immigrants into a country when there's legal ways to immigrate into a country. And you always say that's right. Them. You're right, right. But we have, you know, we like to say that we're doing this because people have a right to come into the country. And I am not going to get on a political debate at all on any open forum. But when illegal immigrants will come in or illegal aliens by a group of people and are given sanctuary, that will affect that political viewpoint. And people will vote for that <laughs> if it means they can stay. So you're kind of importing yeah. voters too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what so one thing that we need to remember, Denise, is that all of us at one time were immigrants. Our, our family was immigrants. I don't think any of us were from here. Absolutely. No, we weren't all illegal. Mm. Okay. Well, that kind of follows, you know, in how Israel Israel was taken out of their country and their country was filled with immigrants from other countries so if we look at pull out your at a theme chart and we'll just quickly go over these four chapters that we looked at today weren't they fun oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> they really were fun of course for a nerd like me they really were what do you what do you have for the chapter theme for chapter 40 on your at a glance chart. I have the new temple. Yeah. Sorry. I have the new temple vision. New temple vision. Okay. Anybody else? There's also a man measuring it. Remember that? And I thought mm -hmm. that was kind of interesting, wasn't it? Mm hmm. How about chapter 41? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's coming in. I was feeling unloved here. Now people are coming in. I copied the one that you wrote because I couldn't come up with the name. So I wrote the holy place. <laughs> yeah, because that's what it's talking about is the holy place. Yeah. yeah. How about mm -hmm. chapter 42? I've got rooms for the priests. For the priests, yeah. The holy chambers. Did you realize that there were so many places in that temple? No. They were so ornate. Yes, very ornate, huh? Mm -hmm. How about how about chapter 43? God's glory returns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you remember, I think it was in chapter 8 or 11, I can't remember which one, The when the glory left? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, can you imagine the glory of God leaving the temple? Mm. How, what a sad feeling that would be for, for, anybody, for anybody, I think. Don't you think? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um... 43, the East Gate, glory came, altar and priest. That's something. And then chapter 40, how does this chapter begin? Ezekiel a date. turned to Jerusalem in a vision. And yeah. obviously Jerusalem doesn't look like it did when he left. But he looks and he sees... Um, the appearance of a man who is right in the temple who looks like he's cast in bronze, but he has a measuring rod. Mm -hmm. And he's going that's to what this guy that's what this guy's holding right now. Is, right. That's a measuring rod. Oh. And he's going to lead Ezekiel around 
and tell him that he wants him to really with his eyes see everything, with his ears hear everything, and pay attention to all the details to pass this along to the Israelites. So he was yanked up, and by the way, that's yanking from his hair, shaking mm -hmm. up from his head, okay? Taken oh. to the city, and there was a temple there, but he already knew the temple was gone, didn't he? The real temple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he saw the man who was like bronze, and the man had a line of flax, a linen cord, and a measuring rod. He was standing in the gateway facing the eastern gate. The eastern gate right now is closed off. So there's some unique features in the, in the Ezekiel's temple. Um, no wall or partition to exclude the Gentiles is there. Yeah. That Which, and that's Ephesians. I, you know, I was typing quickly. The Gentiles were previously welcome in the outer courts, but excluded from the inner courts on pain of death. I mean, they would actually kill them. You know, you can't come in here. You're dead. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that what? For the Gentiles. There's no separation. There's no separation. That's kind of neat. No labor. The labor was the water for sanctification. Yeah. There's no table of showbread. True bread, I mean. Because Jesus is the bread. Yeah, there you go. I He's did. I looked up those scriptures you gave us. That was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So they don't need the lampstand because he is the light. light. The light. Yeah. There's no golden altar of incense because he's there to take the prayers himself. And yeah. there's no veil. Because it was already torn. Mm -hmm. Well, it was torn, but it was repaired. But there's no reason to separate man from God. Yes. And so there's no Ark of the Covenant. Why Why would that be important? We have a new covenant. We have a new covenant. Yeah. So um, I'm going to show a video. Okay. Oh, that was but, the one. Yeah. But first, of all, I'm going to go give you a little bit of history mm -hmm. here. The first temple of Bab was destroyed by Babylon on the 9th of Av in 586 BC. 70 years later, the Jews were allowed to start building the second temple. This was the temple in place when Jesus was on earth. It was called the Herod's Temple because Herod built on it to, you know, so the Jews would love him or whatever. And it was just glorious. You talk about ornate, you know. Then it was destroyed by the Romans by General Titus on the 9th of Av in AD 70. Now, that's weird. That's the same day, didn't it? Hmm. Sure is. Yeah. It is believed that a third temple will be built and then destroyed before the second coming of Jesus. And that is when Jesus will build the Ezekiel temple. It is much bigger than any of the others, so the land will need to be changed as described in Ezekiel. And we'll get to that. Apparently, the Mount of Olives will be destroyed by a devastating earthquake. Major topographical changes will occur throughout the land in Israel as well. And uh, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. So it'll be all yeah. flattened out. Isn't that interesting? Thank you. So I'm going to, I'm mm -hmm. going to do a new share. Oh, and I got all sorts of things up, don't I? Uh, but where's the thing I want? Oh, I know. Let's just stop share. R. Mm -hmm. R, 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 R. Okay. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, now we'll go over to another share, but I got to go over here first. And I have to go over to YouTube. 
And then I got to share this. Where, where's my share now? Where's my share now? I have it. No, I'm sorry. It's not at the bottom of your screen? No. That's weird. Well, we'll just cheat. Can you see that now? Yes. Can you hear the music? Yes. So this is just going over these four chapters, okay? I think it's so neat. Cause, so here's the Eastern Gate. Eastern Gate, I think. The wall outside the house was all around it.
picked out the wrong one. Uh, let's see. One reason to try Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos? We'll give you two. Chipotle Ranch and Avocado BLT. Well. Here's chapter 41. think they do I don't think they have one on 43 well or is that it yeah that's no that's 42 and 43 it's only three minutes that's when the glory of God comes back in 43 
What'd you think of that? Can you hear me? That yes. Thank awesome. you. That was cool. Thank you. That was yes. awesome. Wasn't that cool? Yes. 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 Yeah, I think it gives you more perspective, you know, of what it's really going to look like, you know, and that's why all these measurements are in there. There's a purpose for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? It says in the literature that this temple, the Ezekiel temple, will be built uh, by Jesus. Is that one that's to be built in the millennium or something? Yes. Is that what they're saying? That's what the Christians say. Why will we need altars? Jesus has already been the sacri perfect sacrifice. Well, yeah. it's not for sin offering. It's for the other kind of offerings. Oh, okay. Because he's already paid for the sin offering. Gotcha. Yeah. Does that Ms. make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. I thought they did sin offerings, so. though. And I was reading, I was reading, because I had that same question that in several commentaries about it being a memorial type thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's know, a so, lot of different viewpoints on it. Yeah. You know? Um, so, you know, what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> it, does, it does say they do sin offerings, so in 4517... Sin offering, green we aren't, offering. We aren't on 45 yet. How oh, dare sorry. you get ahead? How dare you get ahead? 45, 17. Yeah. Because that puzzled me too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see sin offering listed in 17. 45 verse 17, it says. I don't see sin offering there. Earth, grain, peace, grain. There it is. And he shall provide. Oh, it's 19. He, Sorry. He shall provide the sin offering. 19. The priest shall take some of the blood from the sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the house, on the four corners of the ledge of the altar, and on the posts of the gate of the inner court. Is that part of the sanctification of the temple? Yeah, of the temple sanctuary, yes. Yeah, they, that's a different thing. Okay. But they are they don't realize that they're gonna still they don't need sin offering anymore. You know, it talked about where uh the land will be changed. Mm -hmm. Here I'm just giving you a snapshot of forty chapters forty seven and forty eight. See the how the twelve tribes are there. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. eleven, twelve. Okay, yeah, twelve tribes um, will be divided up. You know, um, that'll be that'll be different. Okay. Now, in chapter forty-three, what did you see in chapters eight through eleven? And you can go to your at a glance chart and kind of get an idea to this. That God's glory <laughs> Well, the glory left. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, so. Go ahead. Well, she said it. <laughs> oh, okay. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> and they saw the glory, but okay. Um, mm -hmm. It left and it was progressively, okay. He saw the glory of the Lord leave the temple because of the abominations, even by the priests. Remember the priest in the walls, you know, oh, yeah. doing, doing all their stuff, you know. And basically, it's like, okay, I mean, they're actually in the temple, but they go hide their sin still. But when the glory left, it did it progressively. First the temple and the threshold. Then it went through the eastern gate and then the city, Okay. Yes. And then in the vision of in Ezekiel 43, the glory returns to the temple pretty much the way it left, didn't it? Yeah. I, God I is the God of order. Wow. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. He certainly is, isn't it? So what do verses 6 through 9 say about the Lord and Israel? That God would dwell with him forever. Yeah. 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 And if you compare that to, to, let's see here, let's go to 37, 
24 through 28. 24 through 28. Um, my servant David will be king over them, and they will have one shepherd, and they will walk in my ordinances and keep my statutes and observe them. They will live on the land, and I will give, I gave to Jacob, my servant, in, which is Israel, in which your fathers lived, and they will live on it, they, their sons, and their sons' sons forever. And David, my servant, will be the prince forever. Um, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And then it goes into the covenant of peace. The dwelling place also we will be with them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. And the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel, and my sanctuary is still in the midst forever. So there's still going to be nations. Okay, it's not going to be a one world government, is it? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. How, how is this all melded together with Revelation and the heavenly Jerusalem? We'll, we'll be getting to that in future weeks, in the next couple of weeks. It's <laughs> a big <laughs> question. <laughs> well, I mean, but that is the holy, holy Jerusalem, and a lot of that. Now, K. Arthur and uh, um, dispositional, like dispensationalism, yeah, believe it's you know literally going to be this way. Mm -hmm. Most of the church does not believe that. Okay, they believe it's mostly symbolic. So we really don't want know what it means, okay? Uh, the first, when you study um, church history, um, it wasn't until like um, 1800 that these ideas yeah. came in. Hmm. The first, the first church didn't believe like they're teaching now. So I'm kind of confused my own self, okay? Um, because I learned it that way. I learned it that way and i had it preached to me that way but then as i studied the history and stuff mm -hmm. i see that it wasn't that that wasn't the belief always okay um in ezekiel 126 it talks about the throne his throne is in heaven at this time his throne will be where mm -hmm. oh. yeah It'll be on earth. And then that's during that thousand years. Is that correct? This is at the end of the thousand. Or, you know, and oh. the thousand years okay. is a symbolic number. Okay. Okay. Don't think it's going to be a thousand years because okay. I don't, I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. There's many different opinions on this. As many people on earth, there's that many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? And nobody knows for sure. God knows. God knows. Not even the angels know the hour and the time. Not even Jesus. Yep, not even Jesus. Not even Jesus knows the time. Yep. He that's just had a general idea and he goes, that's okay with me. All right. What else does it say about the Lord in Israel in these verses? There's some important things said. Which ones? Which uh, chapter? Which and what verses, verses six through nine oh, of chapter so, uh, forty-three. All right. Okay. The, about that, that the people weren't going to defile his name anymore. Absolutely. They were, were going to feel ashamed. <laughs> yeah. For what they had done. They had defiled his name with their idolatry. Yeah. And what does he call them to do? Put away their idolatry. <laughs> Put it away, and the corpse is far from him. Yeah. yeah. Will they defy his holy name again? No. <laughs> yeah, and then and then what um, someone said about because I don't have the pictures. I can't tell who was talking. They will be ashamed for what they have done. Yeah. What do you think of that? Um, that being ashamed. I, hmm. Have you ever been ashamed of something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah my mouth <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, gosh, I hope God really has forgiven me for that, you know, and he has, <laughs> you know, but it's, sometimes it's, you haven't forgiven yourself, have you? Mm-hmm. It says, if they are ashamed uh, for what yes. they then he'll make known to them the design of the house. So it's kind of a conditional thing. Oh, okay. it is, isn't it? To me, to me, it looks like I also uh, stopped yeah, over that. Uh, to me, it looks like there's only a subgroup that's actually going to be ashamed. Not all of them. Yeah, I mean, not everybody is going to, you know, go for it, are they? Mm-hmm. Even when Jesus <laughs> is on Earth and they wow. can see Him. Yeah. Right. That's so hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, to understand, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, when we look at Ezekiel forty three eleven, what was Ezekiel to do with what he saw? Well, he... The people who are ashamed, they should uh, get to know the design of the temple, mm-hmm. and. Uh, that's kind of interesting, isn't that? It's a subgroup. I don't know. It's almost like believers will be told the plan of the temple or the design of the temple and make known to them all the statutes and the whole design and all its laws. It looks like there's a subgroup because I'm sure not all Jewish people will be saved. It is people who will follow Christ, who, who will actually submit to God. That's how it looks to me. Yeah. They will yeah. be let into the secrets and into the plans. That's how I thought about it. And, and for those people, what does what is Ezekiel told to do so that they can know this information? Write it down. Be ashamed. Yeah, to write it down so that they'll know what the whole design. There is a design. There is a purpose. And that's why Ezekiel was shown this stuff. <coughs> Yeah. For I, wonder our a, I wonder what a, a, a vision's like. Hmm. Does anybody ever wonder that? I fell down, you guys, and instead of my left side or my ribs, I cracked my right side this last oh. week. Ugh, yeah, I, I just have to destroy myself, I think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so who who else benefits yeah, from Ezekiel? invites him over and we get to talk to him. Who else uh, yes, benefits from Ezekiel writing this? The church. The church, and, yeah. And also, you know, believers who read the Bible. Yeah, anyone who reads the Bible and believes the Bible. You can read it and not believe it. True. You know, I remember reading the Bible and it made no sense to me until I really believed in the Bible. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's also like a puzzle, too. And when you read a lot of it, it all comes together. And most people don't have the time and patience to read through it all. Yeah, and that's why you have, well, and and it's like, that's why I like precept upon precept. Because you take one precept and you add it all together. And you, you, it's, it's, to me, when my eyes are open, because I think a lot of times our eyes aren't open. When I could see the poetry of the Bible, it does all fit together, but you have to know the whole thing. And I, I'm not there yet. I don't think you ever do get there. You know, anyone who says, oh, I have it all figured out, there's something wrong with them, okay? But I think it is only the infilling of the Holy Spirit that makes yes. a person alive and able to see and then desire to know God and his word. Only the Holy Spirit will uh, achieve that. And uh, what is it? Spiritual things are uh, discerned spiritually. So I think the only time you ever going to take any interest or and have any understanding is if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I I I agree with that statement. How about y'all? Yes. Things just jump out at you. <laughs> In fact, the, this Ezekiel study has felt made me feel about like one thing that actually humankind cannot save themselves. 
the only time they can actually see God and see spiritual things when is when God takes action. Uh, God saves Israel not because of them, and they show clearly they have been unfaithful from their youth, as the Bible says. Only when God fills them with their, with his spirit, then the dead bones will be made alive and they will actually repent and be ashamed. So mm -hmm. you need the spirit to actually be ashamed, to acknowledge God and to have a desire to follow him. Yeah, and I would add to that and to know what sin is. Mm. Yes. yes. You know? So what was the law of the house or the temple? Holiness. Holiness, no. yeah. Yeah. So how does this relate to the references to Haggai and Zechariah in the lesson? You had Haggai two, chapter two, one through nine. Said he would again fill his house with glory. Say that again, Laura. He said he would fill his house. He will again fill his house with glory, and it would be greater than the former. Yeah, doesn't that sound great? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it does. Yes. And there'll be peace, won't there? This pretty much sounds like Ezekiel, doesn't it? How about Zechariah? What did you learn in Zechariah? He's going to be in Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, he'll be in Jerusalem. Seems like holiness will ooze out from Jerusalem and there will be no more tolerance for unholiness all over the planet. This one I didn't quite understand. What's that, Laura? Uh, well, I was looking down at Zechariah here that the, all the earth is to go up to worship him at the Feast of Booze. <laughs> is that later or is that it, when Ezekiel was writing? When Ezekiel was. I, I think this is when um, Christ is here. Christ is here. Everybody's going to be required to go to Jerusalem. You know, I don't know how we're all going to fit there, but, um, <laughs> you know, I I don't know how it's all going to be done, but yeah, we'll get to go to Israel and worship the Lord in person. But I think here they're really talking about Israelites. Okay. And the bells on the horses and even the cooking pots in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord. Everything dedicated to them. It everything's mm -hmm. dedicated which is how it should be anyway right mm -hmm. we had some new testament conference um, references what did you learn in first corinthians we're the temple of the, of the holy spirit yeah we're the temple of the holy spirit aren't we yeah mm -hmm. the command is to glorify god in our bodies and in first peter Demanded to be holy. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you consider yourself holy? No. No? Only saved by Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I suppose. Yeah. We are cleansed by the Spirit. Yeah. You know. Not holy by myself. Not by my own lonesome, no. I know I always say that if you see something good in me, it's from God. But if you see something bad, it's from Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. We get it. We'll, yeah, we, you know, I love it. Yeah. Well, in verses 13 through 27. Now, here we have the altar for sacrifices to be cleansed and atoned for. Verse 18 is directed to Ezekiel, the son of man, following the pronouns in the verses 19 through 27, that poss possibly referring to him. From Ezekiel 1, 3, it's clear that he was a priest. priest yeah. mm -hmm. So that's important to remember that Ezekiel is going through this. He is a priest. He was born a priest. The sin offering a bull will be made for the altar to cleanse and make atonement for it. Um, and we're going to learn this next week when we look at Zakot. Zabok? Yes, <laughs> I can't say for some reason, are mentioned here. 
On the second day, a sin offering of a male goat will be made to cleanse the altar. Okay. Each day for seven days, a bull and a ram will be for burnt offerings. If you remember, I believe it was Leviticus number, you know, laid this all out for us. And daily there will be a goat for a sin offering along with a bull and a ram of flock. Now, see, a lot of people argue with this because, like you said, we have Christ down. So why do we have to have sacrifice? I don't know. <laughs> Good answer. For those seven days are to make a tum because remember in Ezekiel days they believed in sacrifice. You had to have sacrifice to cleanse your sins, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. But I think a lot of this is for consecration of the temple, don't you? Actually, I was wondering yes. whether I thought about this a lot because I thought it doesn't make any sense to a Christian. Uh, because like everybody says, you know, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. But I thought maybe this is the plan for Jews to lead them there. They're uh, rooted in their sacrificial system. And eventually God will pour out his spirit and all his sacrificial stuff will be done away with. Maybe it's just a plan for the Jews themselves. The rest of us have already got the message, but there seems to be a separate plan for yeah. Jewish people. Yeah. Maybe what it is, and maybe that is how he teaches. Yeah, the, I mean, I Jews. think he uses uh, this uh, to show the, that. Yeah, and then so. Christ comes out and says, okay, you don't have to do this anymore. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, that's just, yeah. I made it up myself, but I don't know. I have no other explanation because to a Christian, sacrifices make no sense. Mm -hmm. Christ has been the sacrifice, and that's the end of it. So maybe the Jews will led, be led to, to Christ well, via yeah, this but when, when you temple, study, when, when and you then study, they heal. When, yeah. when you study Sorry. the Torah, you understand this a little bit clearer, okay? Mm -hmm. Because in the first five books of the Bible, it explains why you have to do sacrifice. It's all about the blood. I, I understand why, but we have the blood of Christ. So all I'm saying is maybe God yeah. has, uh, they've re the Jews have rejected the, the Christ, the ultimate blood sacrifice that can cleanse because no animal blood can cleanse anybody. It is only Christ's sacrifice. So all I'm saying is, Maybe God has another teaching plan, if you like, for Jews. Here's your temple again. Now listen to this, all these sacrifices, and I'm leading you to actually Christ. Maybe there's a different teaching program. I think that's probably summarizing my, my well, theory. They're, <laughs> they're still waiting for the Messiah. So, Yeah. That's all right. So we've all got it, but the Jews have not. The crucial mm -hmm. people. God have not got it, which is interesting. But won't there be mortal people on the earth during that time? Everyone yes. will not be immortal. Many mortal people will be saved, and they won't just be Jews. It'll, it tells us there's going to be people, other nations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, trying to reconcile all of that is really a mental challenge. <laughs> and it tells us they're going to rebel, they're going to come against. The temple, I don't know, it gets, <clears throat> it's a lot. Well, the third temple will be destroyed again. This, um, they're saying that um, Ezekiel's temple will be the one that Christ builds. I like this in Ezekiel 43, 27, it says, And when they have completed these days, then from the eighth day onward, the priest shall offer on the altar your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, and I will accept you declares the Lord God. Because it's just real important um, to know that you are cleansed by God, you know, and that you are loved by God and accepted and that you're holy before the Lord. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Two more weeks of Ezekiel. Do you think you can hang in on it? <laughs> and then when are you going to start your next study i don't know okay i know you said you're going to do corinthians is that yeah, correct? we'll do we'll do first and second corinthians next year 
Um, mm. It all depends on what kind of surgery so I'm going to need. Oh, I am. okay. Because yeah, I have my first knee surgery October 24th. Oh, well, we're going to miss you. <laughs> and then I don't know, depending on how I do with that is when I'll get my second knee done. But I want to be able to walk the rest of my life. <laughs> and by then, I'm probably going to need more injections in my back. So, But this Ezekiel, are you finding it a little bit more interesting when we start putting it together and what it means? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. this week. I was lost last week. This week is better. Hey, worry, thank you for the, the videos. I, I got... That's stuck good. in the loop of, of this gate, this gate, this measurement, this measurement. And even though we have the diagrams, it's like, so what? And having the 3D visual was very, very, very helpful. Yeah, that was good. I love that. I was, I was like, I remember when I found it in 2015, I was like, this is so cool. You know, because you read it and you go, okay, you know. And, but when you can see it visually, it helps so much, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Makes it more real. Um, my impression you know, of, of all the dining rooms and stuff, I thought, oh, we're going to have a big barbecue, which shouldn't be the thought, the but that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I have ever. seen this. I've seen these videos before. But just watching them today, what really uh, struck me was uh, the depiction of the glory of the Lord coming back. Just imagine if you stand there and the glory of the Lord comes back. You know, it was depicted by some um, orangey, flary kind of thingamajigs. Well, it's, actually, it's, it's, it's I'm going to wonder in, that how. It's yeah, actually I, I mean, described just, in the first part of Ezekiel, right? I know, but we were given some kind of a visual today, and uh, it really, it really made me think. I must think about this again because when God appears Himself, how this is going to be? People have always been struck down, fell face down. You can't imagine it. The Jews themselves said, "Oh Moses, you go up the mountain because we're too frightened." You know. So the whole presence of God appearing is just one overwhelming experience, which really um, struck me as I watched the visuals today. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it because um, I think it's a, it's a good, you know, it's, it's visual. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Actually, you know, the other thing that uh, I found interesting was that, um, it, it shows you a whole lot of palm trees, which are kind of special trees. And the the uh, people put out palm fronds uh, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem with a donkey. It's got that palm theme again. Well, um, palm, they have palm tree farms out there. It's really kind of interesting. Know, but, uh, You'll be driving in the of... desert and you go, there's a bunch of palm trees in the middle of nowhere. Yes, but there are many trees there. And the fact that palm trees were chosen. No, there's not. People, no, there's yeah. not. <laughs> not in Israel. Okay. Not in no. Israel. No, they get two to four mm -hmm. inches of rain a year. Wow. I learned a fun fact this week. What's they that, have, Kathy? There have been 39,000 Jews that have moved back to Israel since October 7th. Yes, that I is read interesting. That, but that's interesting. I also read that, but um, also a very large number of Jews have left since um, October seventh last year. So that's also that's also there. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> We're all intrigued. <laughs> I've only I've I've only heard of people moving there. I've heard Kathy that's a large and. A, and that most of the people have volunteered to be in the army again or, you know, whenever. Because um, they're required male and female when they turn 18 to do two years, is it? In the mm -hmm. service? Yeah. And um, so a lot of people are going back in the army, you know. Just pray for the peace in Jerusalem. That's that's how all of this will happen. Will be the co now that you know the covenant of peace, 
you'll understand why the peace in Jerusalem is so important. And why such a tiny, tiny country has so much bloodshed, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, it's just amazing to me.